Hello everyone, in this video I'll be taking a look at Ubuntu 2004, which is codenamed Focal Fusa. This is a long-term support release of Ubuntu, which Canonical will be supporting for the next five years. The long-term support releases tend to be the most popular versions of Ubuntu, rather than the interim releases which are only supported for nine months. This version of Ubuntu is using the GNOME 3.36 desktop, and under the hood it has the Linux 5.4 kernel, which is also a long-term support kernel. Notable features in this kernel include XFAT included, new WireGuard VPN has been backported, and there's a new lockdown feature, which goes a long way to inhibit exploits from the root user. Ubuntu 2004 is using the Mesa 20.0.4 graphics stack which means graphics drivers for AMD and Intel GPUs are included out of the box. And if you want the Nvidia drivers, well, they can be installed at time of system installation. At system boot up, we can see that Ubuntu is still not really a featherweight in terms of memory usage, just under one gig of memory used with nothing much happening. The layout of the desktop is still reminiscent of Unity. In the top left-hand side, you have the activities launcher where you can move applications to different desktops. Or you can search for applications which are installed on your system. On the left hand side we have launcher with the applications in iconified form, and at the bottom we have the show applications which gives you the full list of applications on your system which you can scroll through with the mouse wheel or click in those little dots. You can navigate around with the keyboard, the mouse, type in the name of applications. It's quite flexible in how you use the desktop. On the top panel we have the time calendar notifications and this do not disturb button so you can mute all application notifications. On the right hand side we have the network volume control and shutdown menu. You can also access the settings, lock the desktop, then if you want to shut down you go into this menu here, the power off, log out and if you want to restart the system then you have to go there and it's a bit of a faff but uh, I'm not sure it's as much of a faff as it used to be. Right clicking on desktop gives you the option of changing background, going into the display settings or the overall settings menu. There's been some changes to the theming this time around. So we have the Yaru light, dark and standard themings. So we do have this uh, purple effect added which replaces a lot of the orange in the previous Ubuntu themes. Dark layout does look quite nice, but the standard layout is a mixture of the light and dark. So I'll leave it at the default. The new version of GNOME Desktop has given us this extensions tool, which is a cut down version of GNOME Tweak. It provides a simpler way of changing a few small items. For example, I can turn off the desktop icons. I can turn off the Ubuntu dock, should you want to go back to a more traditional GNOME Desktop. Although to be fair to Canonical, they have tried to make something of the GNOME Desktop, styling it in a way that uh, other distributions haven't, because uh, at one point you might as well have gone with any old distribution that is, offers the GNOME Desktop, but Canonical have tried to style it a bit like Unity and had to, and themed it in a way that does make them more distinct than other Linux distributions with the GNOME desktop. Anyway, if you wanted more extensions on your system, you can get them from the gnome.org website. There's plenty of things you can add to the desktop. You can still access the full range of GNOME tweaks through the GNOME tweaks package and GNOME shell extensions package. And we get options here like changing the placements of the close, minimize, and maximize buttons. So I can move them across to the left hand side to replicate older versions of Ubuntu. Although I'm still not sure I can get used to this behavior of having the application buttons in the window bar. Yeah, that is a feature of GNOME. It's not really for me, but perhaps it won't bother you. The first time run of Ubuntu shows this welcome screen where you can connect your online account. You've got the usual ones of Google and Microsoft, but it's also nice to see the Nextcloud account feature in there as well. And you can also add accounts at a later time, so I'll skip that. There's an option to set up live patch. That's good for more enterprise environments. We can help improve Ubuntu by sending a one-time bit of information about the system, which goes to Canonical. It also shows your choices during install, your hardware setup, which can help improve future releases, or you could deny as well your choice. And there's also more of a setup on privacy. And finally, we're ready to go and install some applications. So open the software center up. The push towards using snap packages instead of dev packages has become quite apparent in this release. We could call it deb to snap. If you take a look at the source, the snap packages will be snapcraft.io. 
The concept of snap packages is really good in that you've got a sandboxed application that will be continually updated. I think it's updated up to four times a day and it is cross-platform. Although it does mean all the dependencies are included so the packages are quite a bit higher than the standard dev packages. But you don't have to deal with a dependency nightmare if you're trying to push one application ahead that may have library files which other applications on your system are dependent on. Although one very obvious downside of snaps is the lack of styling. I don't know how Ubuntu still keep getting this wrong, although admittedly it is much better in this release, and I will praise Canonical on this part. The integration of snap packages is significantly improved, but not perfect. In the example of using Inkscape, the theming looks fine, the mouse cursor is the same. This looks exactly the same as using the dev package. It's seamless, and that is exactly how it should be with snaps. In comparison though, VLC still looks horrific. So it's not perfect, but it's better. Looking at the selection of applications on the system, it is fairly minimal. I installed extensions in Inkscape for a bit of testing on this distribution. This is the normal system installation, which if you find a bit chunky, you can swap to the minimal version of the installation. Not sure why it's called that graphics instead of LibreOffice, but yeah. That's another feature of GNOME, you can organize like applications into a single folder. Anyway, we have Firefox, a web browser, partial suite of LibreOffice. There's a few basic games on the system, as well as a picture viewer, Thunderbird email. It is basic enough that you can build it up and make it your own system. And there's the last few things I want to look at under system settings. So a new feature is the fractional scaling and the ability to modify the scale, which is good for high definition displays. There's night light setting under the screen display. That's good for reducing the amount of blue light late in the evenings. It is a feature I rather like using on my KDE desktop and my Android phone. Under notifications, you can choose individual notification settings for each application, or you can impose a do not disturb and have no notifications at all. There's some nice features under connectivity for those users concerned about their privacy, so you can disable connectivity check-in, disable location services, as well as configuring the file history and recycle bin durations. Oh, and screen lock, so you can turn off the automatic screen lock-in. I don't like to have that on my home desktop, really, but I can certainly see the use of that on a laptop. So Ubuntu 2004 seems to be a nice, solid release. I initially started using it prior to the beta release with Ubuntu Server, and then just after the beta with Kubuntu on the KDE desktop. I've not had any significant problems under either operating system, well, if anything, I would say I've had no problems at all under the Ubuntu server and minor problems under the KDE desktop. Ubuntu desktop itself with GNOME seems to have been fine here. It is good to see Canonical trying to make something a bit more unique with Ubuntu using the GNOME desktop. Ubuntu is a bit more user-friendly compared to the likes of Debian and Fedora. Although there are more user-friendly distributions with the likes of Ubuntu Mate and Linux Mint. There is plenty of choice in Linux, and one could perhaps say too much choice. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.